All right, everybody, welcome. This is Night Saber Z42. It's time for the Testament of Sherlock Holmes, and this is fresh off the heels from Sherlock Holmes: The Awakening, um, which I was a little bit disappointed about. But I am eager to start the Testament, and I am thinking that this is going to be quite the fun ride. So, um. It looks to be about the same as the other game, although there is, for some reason, a normal and a hard mode, which I don't quite understand. I will just leave it at normal, because I really don't want to make the puzzles all that more difficult, but I don't know anything about this game, just like I did about the others, so let's get started. Yes, new game. Oh, look, it's a little frog guy. Poke it. Poke it. By Focus and Frogware Games. Focus, focus. The F? We're little kids now! You can be Sherlock, and the Blama can be Watson. And I'm gonna take a guess this is modern era because of the overalls. Yeah, you go on ahead and la la la. Timothy bit my finger! That one's obviously Watson. Blah! I'm Chucky. Stab, 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 stab. Ah. Ooh. Well, he got stabbed already. Hey, that girl's messing with the dangerous sword. Oh my gosh, phone. I really wish people would stop e emailing me at work. Or not at work, but emailing from my work. <laughs> it's nine o'clock. No, I don't think so. At night. Stop emailing. I wish that I had seen through all your lies. Oh, start from the beginning, not the middle. And so I decided to pick up my pen to relate the most disturbing episode of my life thus far. It all began early one morning in 1898, when Sherlock Holmes invited me to accompany him on a visit to the Marquis of Conningham. Wasn't it Marquis of Conningham? Better graphics! Yay! Same voice actors? For Watson, yes. How about Sherlock? Awesome, my dear fellow. We can now go and inform the Marquis that we have found the Samoan necklace, and very much faster than Inspector Baines, too, which pleases me. Have you really solved the theft, Holmes? And so quickly? I have indeed, Watson. And believe me, it was completely unnecessary to spread out all over London, as our friend Baines thought was best. He likes to boast that his methods are equal to mine, but once again the outcome has contradicted him. After all these years of accompanying you upon your investigations, I thought that by now I should be reasonably capable of following your train of thought. But in this particular case, I must admit that I don't understand anything at all. That's right, you don't. Ah, you see, but you do not observe, Watson. There lies the difference. It is a matter of course. A matter of course, in the middle of the night, when everyone is fast asleep, the service bell within that room rings out and alerts the servants. They dress quickly and come running, but the door is locked and there is a strong smell of burning from within. A few seconds later, the master of the house himself, 
the robbed Marchioness's husband, the Marquis of Conningham, arrives and unlocks the door using the sole key. A fire has started inside the room, but they have managed to arrive in time to put it out. It is at that moment that the Marquis realizes that the famous Samoan necklace, which had been safe within its glass cabinet only a few hours earlier, has now disappeared. In order to explain, let us confirm my theory before the arrival of Inspector Baines. Oh my gosh! The improved graphics is a godsend right now. This is awesome. And to be honest, I am I love the voice acting. I don't know why, but I mean, even in the other games, like The Awakened, even though that was a much earlier one than Jack the Ripper, it was still pretty cool. I rather like it, and I like that they have the same, even though they sound older, which is much better, by the way. Older people know how to do it. Wait, what is that? Is that me? Is that like my uh, quick save button? Oh, no. Okay, that's my question mark revealing thing. So, I'm probably going to do this all up in the third person now because, hey, I could actually use the WASD keys to walk around somewhat. Yes, just like that. Um, hey, we have a piano in the room now. And our dining room table is gone. But other than that, boom! Identify. This was cut with a diamond. A clean, discreet piece of work. This is where the necklace was. Really? See how tiny the hole is, and not one fingerprint upon the window. Hmm. You always interact with left click after clues examined. I come will turn green. Thank you, I know how to play this game, sort of, but keep showing me the tips. Anyways, right click to show me all the stuff. Okay, dialogue, inventory. Oh, I got a knife. I'm going to stab Watson. Um, does that say pocketbook? Uh, clues. This menu not available because I can only play as people. Ooh, look at this. Cool. Are those achievements? I think those are achievements. And, oh, that's switching perspectives. Uh, clicking is a lot better, as I had seen, but I rather do the bass keys to go ahead and... This window was cut with... See how tiny the hole is, and not... You know what, while we're at it, what I'm going to do, I'm going to... Okay, yeah. Maybe the volume is a little... Or the music volume is a little bit too much... Because I would rather hear the voices over everybody else. Sorry. This is my test through. I talk to Watson. Near the left window. Oh. To the left window. Oh, yeah, look at that. I got All clues. The are locked. They've not been forced. Oh, this isn't our house. Ah. A mark undoubtedly made by a diamond. Someone tried to cut the glass, but he was interrupted. Therefore, the thief tried to escape through the window, but he was interrupted. That it was. Go to the chimney. Ah, oh, look at that. They're babying us. So this isn't 221 B Baker Street. So this is the Marquis house or the Marquis. I'm pretty sure I need some. I need to figure out how you actually say that. Hold on. I texted. Ah, it is Marquis. My French speaking fiance has identified that Marcus is actually Marquis. I was right. Grab the magnifying glass, thank you. Cool, let's select it instead of stabbing Watson on the scores near the piano. What is it, Moonlight Sonata? Sonata? Let's examine the crumpled scores that have fallen off the piano. Um. These sooty prints were left by a tiny hand. It was a kid. I understand why these music scores are covered with soot. Because a kid tried to... Why would I want to do that? Because a kid tried to break and enter. That's why. I don't want to. Thank you. I don't want to switch to point click. Yeah, I can even run right here. 
Who's the room? Any other clues? Like this right These here. documents are not very interesting, even though they're addressed to the Minister of Maritime Affairs. The Marquis himself. Marquis! That's gonna bother me. A candle. It must have fallen from the chandelier. So it came from the ceiling then. Uh, more clues? Footprints. You are not going to get on your knees to examine them. Yes, there is no. no need. It is soot. The servants must have trodden in it while they were putting out the fire. Oh man, I actually like Sherlock's shoes though. Those are kind of like my shoes, my dancing shoes. Heading yes. towards his chosen escape route, probably the window, the thief knocked over the stool, which then caught fire. But why didn't he try to put the fire out at once? Why should he? It's not his damn house. The fire started here, just beneath the bell pull. Whoever pulled the cord would have had his feet in the fire, unless it was pulled before the fire started. Hmm. So we intentionally started the fire then. Strange. There are some objects here that have been knocked over. Okay. What about the safe? The chest wasn't opened. The necklace wasn't in it. How about the uh, metronome right there? Okay. That seems to be all the clues that we've gathered. When the servants arrived at the door, having been alerted by the bell, they saw evidence of the theft and the fire, but they didn't see the thief. This door is very hard to force. The Marquis is the only person to have the key. The thief could not get out through here until eventually when the door was opened by the servants. Exactly. So the servants let him out because the thief was hiding in the door or hiding in the room when the servants came in. But where would he hide? Those are locked. They've not been forced. Okay. Ah, clue! I see you! A fish tank. Not very well kept, this aquarium. I can see a dead fish floating on the surface. Did I forget? Oh. Po po possibly this where he was hiding. screen makes an ideal hiding place. As the theft was committed at night, I conclude that the thief hid himself behind the draft screen and waited until he was alone in the room. Is that a lemon tree? Strange. There aren't any prints. Yet I'm sure that the thief hid here. Maybe he sat. Ah, Mr. Holmes, you're already here. Good morning, Inspector. You've arrived just in time. <laughs> Scotland Yard arrives like the cavalry, always in the nick of time. Ah, but I know that satisfied expression, Mr. Holmes. Have you already solved the case? Damn right. Me and my pink and white shirt have, or we vest. Have retraced the thief's rather unusual footsteps. He is a true acrobat. But what I cannot understand is that when the servants entered the room, there was no one to be seen. An acrobat, perhaps, but an invisible one? <laughs> I do not think so. The only explanation is that the thief escaped before the servants arrived. I don't know how, but there is no other way. Half a point for the doctor, nil for the inspector. I am pleased to see that you find the situation amusing, Mr. Holmes. Very well then, explain. Dr. Watson was correct when he mentioned acrobatics, but he is mistaken about the nature of the acrobat. As for you, Baines, you're quite incorrect, as the thief was in the room when the servants entered. Explain, for heaven's sake, Mr. Holmes. Watson, how could a thief be missed in the middle of eight men? I don't know. Because he is very small? <laughs> Stop teasing us, Holmes. Think up. Exactly. Because he is small, small and remarkably agile. You're thinking of a monkey? And a trained monkey at that. Without a doubt, a Leontopicathus rosalia from Central America. The animal had been hidden inside the room for several hours, calmly awaiting the signal from his master. Once night had fallen and the room was empty, a high-frequency whistle alerted the monkey that it was time to begin the procedure for which he had been trained. The monkey emerged from his hiding place and used the point of a diamond to open the glass cabinet and steal the necklace. He headed across to the window by the chimney, but knocked over the stool, which in turn knocked aside the fire guard and started the fire. The frightened monkey jumped from the chimney by swinging from the bell pool, thus alerting the house servants. 
He then went to the window and began to use his diamond to cut a hole, but was interrupted by the staff trying to gain entry via the door, and he panicked again. He ran across the piano, scattering the music scores onto the floor, before hiding inside the chandelier, knocking over a candle. Finally, the servants and the Marquis entered the room, leaving the door open while they put out the fire. It was during the confusion that our agile little thief made his escape through the doorway. As simple as that. A brilliant explanation. Bravo, Holmes. And the necklace? I can see it from here, my friends. It's right in front of us. We have searched the room from top to bottom, Holmes. How were we unable to find it? Because we paid insufficient attention to the only victim of this affair. What victim? No one is dead? Yes, Watson. A poor goldfish whose destiny was to die, crushed by one of the most precious necklaces in England. The aquarium is just beneath the chandelier. I understand. The little monkey had likely hung the necklace around its neck and lost it when he leapt from the chandelier. The jewels fell into the aquarium where they remain now. Oh, I didn't even roll up his sleeves. I do like that vest though. Candy stripe vest, oh yeah. Marquis, here is your necklace. In Elementary. Just a little wet. Mr. Holmes, this brilliant demonstration does credit to your reputation. Thank you so much, Marquis. Do you wish to verify the authenticity of your jewel? No, I recognize it. I have spent many hours admiring it, you know. Good. I will return it to its box and... Inspector! A bank has just been held up! You must follow me at once! Orders of Scotland Yard! What times? Sirs, duty calls. My regards, Marcus. Well done again, Mr. Holmes. There, the necklace is in its box. We've lost enough time here. Let's go home, Watson. Ah, very well, as you wish. A good day to you, Marquis. With pleasure, gentlemen. And once again, thank you. Hmm. I like his how decorated his room was. That's pretty cool. I like the statue, too. Oh yeah, 221B Baker Street. Home sweet home. There's the elephant rifle. From the Awakened, I presume? This morning's newspaper. Holmes, have you read this article about you? No, Watson, not yet. And I won't have time to. Read it before you leave. It's outrageous. If you insist. I much rather look at those things over here. Nope, can't look at the elephant gun. Oh, at least our dining table is returned. Oh, I can't even look at the harpoon. Okay. Oh, well. Where's the newspaper again? There it is, right in front of you. You're not even gonna bother to hand it to me. The Globe Explorer. Sherlock Holmes at the home of the Marquis. Wow, it's even spelled differently here. Marquis of Cunningham. The investigation is a fiasco. Yesterday, the celebrated detective Sherlock Holmes was invited to the manor of the Marquis of Cunningham to supply his conclusions following his investigation into the disappearance of the priceless Samoan necklace. It should be recalled that the lady called in the detective after the police appeared, flubuxed in the face of the astonished circumstances surrounding the, surrounding the theft. Indeed, the valuable piece of jewelry disappeared while the door to the room in which it was displayed was locked. The alarm was raised by the servants, alerted by the room's service bell ringing out during the night. When the Marquis and the only person in possession of the key opened the door, everyone rushed in to extinguish the fire that had started, for it was noticed that the necklace had mysteriously vanished. The most astonishing factor is that no thief was found in the room, and all the exits were closed. As usual, Mr. Holmes resolved the case in the twinkling of an eye, and the jewel was recovered. I will not waste my time on the various explanations as to the disappearance, because I would prefer to draw your attention, dear readers, to the last surprising developments of the case, following the departure of Sherlock Holmes, who placed the necklace in the safe himself. 
The Marquis noticed that the jewel was nothing but a poor copy of the original. Let it not be forgotten that the Samoan necklace, although plain and without ornament, is unique because of the rarity of its pearls. Pearls which are found only in a small part of the lagoon of the archipelago at, of the same name, and to which scientists attribute their exceptional quality to the strong density of crystal of aragonite that they are made of. The priceless necklace, brought here by the beginning of the century by Lord Fenton Arwick, Marquis, grandfather, and an eminent explorer should have been part of her daughter's dowry for her marriage to the Duke of Newcastle. So I am going to place a simple question. Should we not in all open-mindedness ask ourselves if the necklace was not simply and deliberately exchanged by a fake by Mr. Holmes himself? I am afraid, dear readers, that the brutality of this question without any preconceptions may certainly shock some of you. But the facts are there, and our thoughts and judgment should not be confused with the regard which we all share for the famous detective. It is not the first time that the Globe Explorer has expressed its reservations as to Sherlock Holmes' methods. Do not forget our counter-investigation into the escape of Arsène Lupin, the Frenchman who took malign pleasures in tarnishing the image of our royal family and who, by lucky chance, managed to elude capture by Mr. Holmes. At the time, we did not hesitate to consider a tacit complicity of the, on the part of the latter, for those who are familiar with Mr. Holmes, it is quite apparent that his character traits show more than the opportunist and brilliant usurper than that of altruistic defender of the law. I would draw the attention of our readers to the suggestion that the description of this gentleman provided by his friends, Dr. John Watson, through his stories, is a long way from the truth. Indeed, his behavior is derisive, contemptuous, haughty, and offensive towards the police, and in particular towards Inspector Berings, replacing Inspector Lestrade, who is currently convalescent, and an habitual abuser of narcotics such as heroin and cocaine. This is why, dear readers, it is important to disregard Sherlock Holmes' good reputation in order to form an objective opinion and to ask the pertinent question, was the necklace that Holmes found already a fake? If that was the case, why did he not mention it, and why should he insist on placing it back within the safe himself? Has the detective some unsavory interest in this affair, or is it a simple case of deceit in order to steal the extraordinary Samoan necklace? It is up to you, dear readers, to form your own opinions, but you can count upon your humble servant to continue revealing, the revealing to the public the doubtful methods and motivations of one who, in the future, I shall not hesitate to call Sherlock Holmes the usurper. To be continued, O Farley. And some other stuff. Prince Woodville, French culinary expert and bagpipe player, might be our next king. That's not so shocking, my dear fellow. You know exactly to which article I'm referring, Holmes. How can Farley dare to tarnish your reputation like that? You know, Watson, that wherever glory walks, jealousy is bound to follow. As for the forgery of the necklace, I suspect that we shall soon be enlightened in this regard. Come in, Inspector Baines. The door's open. Ah, Mr. Holmes. How did you know I was here? You are one of our rare visitors who avoids the second to last step of the stairs, which creaks dreadfully. And if I add the clinking of the handcuffs at your belt, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Inspector? Have you read that rag? Uh... Inspector, I assume that you have the fake necklace with you. It's why you're here. Your superiors would like me to examine it. Indeed. They would like you to confirm or deny putting this fake in the box. Can't that wait? I must go to the house of Lord Peregrine Maitland, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. Uh... Inspector, can you explain this slander? Has the necklace of the Samoas really been replaced by a fake? I don't know how the reporter got hold of the information, but it's true. About the necklace, of course. I wouldn't permit myself to question the integrity and honesty of Mr. Holmes. The necklace is a forgery? Impossible! I saw the Marquis authenticated before my very eyes, before Holmes returned it to its place. Mr. Holmes, the Marquis believes Osmond Farley's theory. I shouldn't be surprised if the reporter isn't behind all this slander about you. He's a freelancer, well known for his explosive and subjective articles. In any case, the Marquis assures us that you were the last person to have the necklace in your hands. Let's return to the Marquis's house, Holmes. I'm sure that we'll have no trouble in taking apart this theory. It is unnecessary. Such allegations collapse on their own, like one of Mrs. Hudson's souffles. <laughs> Let us leave the police to solve this problem and turn our attention to the matters in hand. Perhaps you are right, Holmes. That's kind of cool that we have a dialogue tree, although I wish I knew what he would say specifically. How about the Marchioness? And the Marchioness? 
She is beside herself. Without the necklace, her marriage is compromised. It is the principal item of the young woman's dowry. What a lovely marriage. <laughs> Let's examine the damn thing. Holmes, forgive me for insisting, but don't you want to examine the fake jewellery? Watson, I have an appointment, and it's out of the question that I arrive late. It will only take you a couple of minutes. You really must quell the suspicions put forward in this appalling article. If you will allow me, Inspector, be my guest. Very well. Oh my gosh. Really? So, it was missing in The Awakened, but in J Jack the Ripper, they actually had the VR right here on the wall. That's cool that they brought that back. Okay, who are we talking to? You? What do you think, Holmes? No, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to what him. Really? Where's the neck? Oh, right here on the table, next to the food. What do you think, Holmes? No, I want to touch the thing. Find out if the necklace is authentic or not. Oh, look at that. These three pearls are of poor quality. I didn't notice that before. Really? Whoa, whoops, wrong button. And that this one? pearl is a different color. Got nothing else to say about it? Okay. Examine it again. Who's this? That... Oh. Whoops. My bad. This pearl is too small. It is not in its place here. Too many defects. This necklace is a fake. This is nothing but a vulgar copy. And at a glance, it would appear that the forger has intended for it to be seen as such. How could we have been fooled by such a blatant imitation? I don't understand. Yes, how is it possible? Holmes, do you have a theory about this? I have absolutely no idea. You insisted that I examine the necklace, and I have done so. Now it is important that I keep my appointment. I'm sure, Inspector, that you will throw some light on this affair. Oh, Holmes. You may accompany me, Watson, if you care to do so. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll keep you informed as to my inquiries. Goodbye, Inspector. You mentioned a bishop, didn't you? Are we going to his home? Yes, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. I put his address on our map of London on my desk. Would you get it for me, please? All right, Holmes. Oh, and I get to play as Watson. Anyways, that will come up in the next episode. Ooh, I think that I did read the description for the game, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but I can tell I'm already going to like this. Ooh, look at Toby. Where is Toby, by the way? He's super. Oh, really? There's no Toby? Anyways, feel free to leave a comment down below. Go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. And check the annotations at the end of the video to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And for the series playlist, I will see you in the next video.